We felt that it was important to study the gluten and casein free diet as a potential intervention for symptoms of autism because the parents who were using it at the time were telling us how excited they were that their child was sleeping better and had better formed stools, was more attentive. And we felt that any intervention for children with autism deserved to be studied scientifically to know whether it was safe and effective. What we did is we identify children with autism who were consistently diagnosed using the Autism Diagnostic Inventory and Autism Diagnostic Observation Schedule, which are research quality tests. We characterized their behaviors in three areas because we wanted to cast a broad net since nutritional changes can change things other than autism. That we looked at physiologic symptoms like um, how much weight they gained, what their bowel movements were like, laboratory parameters of nutrition. We looked at behaviors that were not unique to autism, such as sleep and activity, since there have been reports for many years about how diet of all kinds of, of different interventions can affect general behaviors. And then what we really wanted to look at as well were the symptoms that were unique to autism, the social give and take or social reciprocity, the communicative intent, how children want to interact with others, and habits or repetitive sensory motor behaviors. And what we wanted to do, which is unique to this study, is we wanted to make certain that none of the other interventions that could affect change in behavior were different between these children. So none of the children were on other medicines that affected behavior. None of the children were on other supplements that families use to affect behavior change. And most importantly, all of these children were receiving intense early behavioral intervention, which other studies have shown to be effective in um, skill acquisition and affecting change in young children with autism. So it's very important that there were we attempted to control for all the confounds, and what confound means are the other things that can affect the results. What would happen on a weekly basis is we would go in and do our baseline observations. We'd look at the sleep data for the week, we'd look at the stool data, we would then do an ob a standardized observation around activity and behavior that we would have the parent, the the early intervention staff, the EIBI staff, and one of our research staff complete. We, we would do that before doing anything with the child. Then if they were at baseline levels in these areas, we, they would get a specialized snack by a different member of the research team who would go to the child's home two hours before the scheduled observation and either for breakfast or for lunch or at snack time give the child the study snack that we developed so that the parent and the observer had no clue what it looked like and what the child got. But it was they were devised in the, the clinical research center so that they really looked alike. So what do parents do? Well, parents have the ultimate choice in what interventions they want to employ for their children. That it is certainly my recommendation as a developmental behavioral pediatrician and a clinician that effective treatments should be pursued and that science needs to be applied to all treatments for autism, all interventions, whether it's nutritional, whether it's a medication or whether it's a, an early intervention. We want to be able to give families the best information so that they can make appropriate choices for their children. So my advice to any family is we believe that early intense behavioral intervention is effective and that no matter what else you do, there's no substitute for appropriate 
language and educational services. So it's really very important to do this in a careful way if you're going to do it. Um, and a registered dietitian with familiarity with young children should be able to help a family not only in identifying an appropriate menu or set of menus for their children to identify what foods are not um, appropriate if you're going to be cutting out gluten and casein and also a little bit of advice about how to get your preschooler to eat Brussels sprouts.